Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us. As they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table, the story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bone Thrower's Theater. My name is Jordan, and I am the GM. I am Aaron, and I usually play Sam Faluge. I'm Johnny, and I occasionally play Chime North. I'm Jeff, and I usually play Jer Lamb. And I'm Jeremy, usually playing Julian Illix. Yeah, so... We normally don't have a commentary episode after only uh, two episodes, but we're going to go ahead and do that. We're actually having to cut it a little short because uh, this is our three days before Christmas recording. <laughs> yeah, it's like everybody has different places they have to be. I have to drive all the way up to New York State uh, this evening, and the Groves both have parties. I think Aaron and, and Jeremy, you're pretty easy tonight. Oh, you don't have much going on beyond this, do you? I have football to watch. <laughs> I'm painting. You're painting. Mm. So yeah, um, we didn't get to do too much of recording today, but we had a good time. Ooh, uh, yeah, we got some gems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, ah, there were some really good moments. I personally really loved the scene where Julian confronted an elemental and had a weird apparition. I thought that was probably one of my favorite scenes. Of yeah, and that created a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Because I noted, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but when Julian first reached out and touched the image of Aelin, um, he heard both the Aelin's voice and his mother's voice. But after the apparition kind of faded off, it was only the mother's voice. Does that mean that they... Elemental has the choice to release the memories the, and the experience, the, the, not the consciousness of the yeah, person, and yeah. let them finally be at rest, or has the choice to retain them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's an interesting thing because we kind of said that Julian's Julian's theory was that the elementals retain the consciousness of anybody that they have bonded with them, mm -hmm. which is why when they are disbonded. That person dies. So he's trying to figure out if there's a way to do that. That's one of his goals. Is there a way to disbond an elemental without killing the human? Separate the soul from the elemental. Yeah, pretty much. Which, if that is the case, that the elemental decided to release Aelin's soul or consciousness and let it pretty much die mm -hmm. fully, that would hint that there may be a way to do that. Or it could be the elemental is messing with your mind. Yeah, 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 yes. Which, if you remember the kind of their conversation, that's how Julian is taking it. Yeah. Because he even said, stop using her as an scapegoat. Yes. Well, that's, the, my question was, so would a fire elemental be able to create mental imagery for somebody? You know, is, it, is that in the wheelhouse of a fire elemental? Was my... Oh, well, yeah, yeah that's, that's another good question. If it is, or is it? I mean, it could be just because that particular fire mental has a huge connection with Julian. Yeah, yeah. Because Julian has talked to that fire elemental before. before. Also, I mean, Julian was able to see the elemental. Most people are not able to see elementals. So. Well, that's a new thing for Julian. Yeah. yeah, I know. And he still hasn't told anybody <laughs> he can see that. Yeah. So that conversation was e even more odd to everybody else around him. Yeah. Cause well, yeah, you just walked over to the water trough and started screaming. And then s it started boiling. Yeah, it started boiling, then you started screaming. Yeah. It's great to have those moments where the character seems like they're just completely unhinged. Which is actually not too far from where Julian is. Yeah. Honestly. I suspect that Julian is trying to uh, take himself on an elemental himself. I don't know if that's really his his final goal, um, because Julian does seem to have a rather strong distaste for elementals yes. in general. Mm -hmm. So um, it's one of those become the thing you hate to hunt down, hunt them down type of deals. It could be. 
I guess we will just have to see how that evolves. Yeah. But we did have a discussion in between whether or not innates could become proxies, and we decided that... that well, that was in the, our building of the world. They can't. Yeah. Well, you were or the other. You were saying that maybe oh. the power of if the person who who becomes a proxy, they would lose their innate. Abilities. No, no, no. That the, is their ability. That is their innate ability oh, yeah. is to become a proxy, which is not a bad theory. Uh, it, it would at least be a reason for yeah, uh, why you, you can't. why why you can't do both. both. Both, but it also would be a reason why. They would join forces in that part of the war. The war could be in our world building. Mm-hmm. Could be. Aside from just they're not commons, they're not but that that humans. opens up a yeah. whole another level of complicatedness because elementals can forcibly bond mm-hmm. to. People, yeah. they can decide. I'm going to bond with that person without yeah. any Which choice. Which we saw in our in opening the scene yeah. of this campaign, right? So, if that's the case, then do elementals automatically sense that innate ability, or are they able to overwhelm a regular individual somehow? Maybe there's different kinds of proxies. I don't yeah. know. So, I, yeah, that, it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that it brings up, which. It's fun for world building, but I don't know how that impacts the the story too I don't much. Think, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and that it, that's it's just something to muse on. I know that's the hard part about <laughs> role playing games, especially the ones that we've done. Is that every single game that we've had, we've gone layers and layers deep on our yeah. explication of what everything means within the world. Well, it's because we create our own world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which may also makes it far more fun. Game for us. Right. Oh yeah. yeah oh, I think it so. It makes it a much more interesting. And it makes our world podcast play in. more unique than anything else out there. Yeah. And it actually gives our characters a reason to do the things that they're doing more so than just, oh hey, we're on a team together, let's do this. Right. <laughs> Which we do sometimes, but that's mostly on the one shots, though. Yeah. Yeah, one, well, one-shots are kind of a different beast altogether than yeah, a campaign. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like, well, you've got to be open to doing more things. Which is fun, and it's it's good for stretching our... Creative muscles. muscles. Yeah, creative muscles, our acting muscles. I think that, honestly, the game that has affected my GMing probably the most is Inspectors. You know, because Inspectors, you, you get a, a success of five or six then the player gets to determine what is going on in the scene. You know, so... To be honest, sometimes that's frustrating yeah. as a player. Because sometimes I was like, I, I just want you to give me some piece of concrete information, and then I know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what I found out <laughs> that I started doing is just give some bit of cryptic information back to you and then let you figure out what you're going to do. <laughs> uh, I'm fine with that, though. <laughs> he just needs to hit the where to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I did with the what I found in Katari's mattress. That uh, that ties into the what happened in the sideways session. Did you notice that there was a tie to the sideways session in that? Because in the side session and the bottom and the table downstairs, oh, uh, there yeah. was a box that was missing. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, dang! <laughs> Didn't even mean to do nope. that. Nope. That's awesome. There was a box that was missing, and then there was Thank a box. Thank you for of, making that connection. Yes, wow. and so as soon as you said that, I'm like, it's the same box. Wow, I did not even make that connection. That's yeah. awesome. I just, uh, let me find something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> but it's the same box. It's the but cipher. it's the same box. It's the cipher for all the code. Yeah, it could be. It's an easy one. That, that is an easy one. Hmm. When so now we have a MacGuffin. In the hands of the most unstable member of the crew right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just and the most alone member of the crew, too. So, we sort of, in that side session, had a question that we raised. Because you said, when we went back to, what's his name? Delby's place. Yeah. That we had left the door open. Mm-hmm. And that papers and stuff were moved. <gasps> was that we left, Katari came in, found what she was looking for, and left. Yeah. Uh-huh. Still a possibility. <laughs> Still yeah. a high possibility. Yeah, because uh, 
Aaron, you said that your character was digging through all their stuff and didn't find anything. No, there was nothing in the luggage. Yeah. Because honestly, that's when I said in the side episode that the table, the desk was all disheveled. Mm -hmm. My thinking was that someone came in after or was looking for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like the house was being watched and someone came in after and was looking for something. Speaking of watched, how soon am I going to jail? That's a good (laughs) question. (laughs) <laughs> that is a good question. And how much we keep you on the run and uh-huh yeah part of it really depends on who's on what side here yeah yeah and sort of as i'm sitting there listening was sitting there listening as julian to the two fire proxies ransack through Katari stuff that was sort of a defining moment and it's like okay maybe she's not a double agent or she's the best double agent ever even her own organization that she's actually working for is actually suspicious. Suspicious of it, right? Yeah. Smalls and Digby were fun. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that Johnny brought up in between the last session that we recorded in this commentary was that this is a very roles light campaign. It's a very role play heavy campaign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder if that's a consequence of using microscope as the way to set up the world. It might be, because we didn't do that with Angel's Garden. It was a lot more roll-heavy. No, uh, but we used Microsoft for Terra Proximus, and we were rolling like crazy for Terra Proximus. I think it's just because we haven't... Oh. Just, we, like, while we've had conflict, we haven't had much like any kind of battles or anything like that. Yeah. We yeah, haven't a had a but... clearly defined big bad yet. Yeah, we've had enemies, well, but not well, big... There is, than, there's a big bad, but no... Direct conflict and, with them. Yeah. And now, here's the thing. We... Choler was our representation of the bad. Mm-hmm. So we got to introduce to the bad, but we didn't really see much evidence of the bad. Now we're seeing, oh, oh fire elemental yeah. here, fire elemental there, working. But So I think now that we've established, we're going to see a whole lot more. And maybe it's just like a, the avalanche. All it takes is that first shot. <laughs> <laughs> and now all the snowballs keep coming. Uh, yeah, so we, we had our first character shot yeah. fired today. Shots? Shots. Full, full clip? Full clip. Fired today. Didn't do anything. <laughs> missed half off. of missed, missed all but one of them, but... Well, I love that the miss was because of a consequence of the of the vision. Right. You know, so it's like how the magic of the world affects what you're going to do. Yeah. And I thought that was a pretty cool little... Yeah, I like there. that, even though it worked against Julian being able to recognize the faces of the people that he was seeing. It's a, it's a good complication. Oh, you can see the heat signatures, but now but, it's masking out other things that you would be able exactly, to see. Correct. Exactly. There's got to be some kind of negative to the benefit that you're getting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Let's go ahead and, and uh, talk the three main things, which might be a little hard because we were abri- abbreviated today. But um, everybody gets, uh, what, ten character points from me? Yay. Woo! Um, and then let's go ahead and talk about character. Who had advanced their character the most? Not Chime. Really, the only character that had any advancement, like anything close to advancement because of interaction, was uh, Julian. Yeah. Yeah, um, but at the same time, but that was purely from interaction. It wasn't really advancement. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean. There was the, like the scene that you said, Jordan, that you liked was the interaction with the yeah, fire the, elemental. He's been yeah. character plot advancement. Though. Yeah, so yeah. there was that that huge moment that was big for Julian. Yeah, um, as a person, right. not really beneficial towards the maybe overall goal of no. the rest of the group, but, but your personal for Julian, character plot. But at the same time, Julian is taking steps backwards or away from. Who he is still advancement. I mean, still advance, a change. Yeah, it's, advancing. It's changing. The, I, whether you see it, consider it advancing. Well, advance in some direction. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> or a devolving <laughs> is is still yet to be interpreted. So, which I wanted to bring this up too. Uh, there was a moment where Aaron, you pointed out that Sam, when sneaking into Katari's apartment. You had said something about not wanting those two to go in with you. Yeah. But maybe Julian 
to go in, mm-hmm. and that was after that scene in the the crater. Yeah, after with, he went crazy, where he oh. was just kind of off the rails and nuts, and but the you time. noticed ready to do some dark things if needed. Sam's and, a little nuts too. So. Yeah, and right, I, I mean, I'm wondering if, if that's the thing. If, <laughs> if Sam saw that, and it's like, hmm, I may. <laughs> We might I'm have starting to like this here. guy a little bit more because he doesn't seem so. I don't. I don't. I think you missed a side conversation that was had. Oh, okay, was you, we were talking about the ability to see the fire elementals that you're getting that from Sam, and I made a joke about the first tastes free about <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming your dealer a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's Sam doesn't even. I don't know if he no, even re- Sam doesn't know. realizes that. He's doing more for Julian than no. right. he thinks. Right. So yeah, I, I thought that interesting. That yeah. may, maybe it was that moment you seeing a little bit more darkness out of <laughs> Julian that Sam is <laughs> shade like darkness. The other side of it, I think, is that Sam saw because Sam commented to uh, Chime, "Is that what I look like?" Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and so you know, mm-hmm. seeing a little bit of self reflection in that, and that it's okay to be a little bit nuts. I'm not crazy. I'm just a little unwell. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that was my response. It says, you look a little crazy. He's insane. <laughs> and I thought that interesting as well, that the two other proxies, Jer and Sam, even after that, like, total outburst, mm-hmm. like, in the crater, and especially what he yelled as the elemental was going off, I mean, you didn't know it was elemental there, but... Right. Just be lucky. I don't know how to kill your kind yet. Yeah, nobody... None of you said anything. Yeah. Even about that. It was almost like your characters were even afraid to wonder what was that was about. Well, that that is kind of where Jer was on that. He was like... I'm not going to remind him that I even have one. (laughs) (laughs) Can't blame you on that one, Jer. But it was funny because Jeff looked at me and his eyes got really big and just kind of shook his head a little bit like, yup, not going to say anything. (laughs) Not going to tee this one off. In terms of the the character point, it sounds like you got it. When Julian gets it. Yeah. Okay. Even though it does, it see, it, Julian doesn't feel like he succeeded as much as everybody else feels like he did. Yeah. Yeah. But now, in terms of best role play, I liked Chime's constant worry of being watched and being, being followed. Late. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. Uh, so you you guys know it's it's, it's after curfew, yeah, right? It's like yeah, we gotta we gotta get home soon. Some of us TikTok have a worries here. Yeah. Which is that's another interesting, interesting point. Uh, remember when we first went into the sewers? That's what Julian was saying. It was like, you know what? Curfews. Uh huh. Is, is soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that now Julian does has no care. No, nope, he curfews. doesn't care anymore. Right. He's willing no. to walk in, in through the, the city with no shirt on <laughs> after curfew. <laughs> and then just wielding a gun, sh- just randomly show up with some other shirt. There's a that reason. smells like smoke. There's a reason. Yeah, I'm sure there is a reason. We don't want to know it yet, but there's a reason. He's joined the council. He is the council. <gasps> He's out there setting fires. I was, yeah, I was like, what if the council is actually fire. was behind the fire drakes? Oh. He said, not what even, if the council is... It's not even... Not it's gotta discussion. be. It's gotta be. Oh, no, no. So no, no. Get, no, no, no. Get this. The council has to be behind the fire drakes. How? Because they all have black cards, assuming. They'll have free reign after curfew. Do they? Well, or they do, or, do they, they know how to they just, circumvent it. Okay. Public park. There is a hidden tunnel under a councilman statue. Do you think that anybody was able to put in a underground lair underneath a public park without the council's awareness? Without the council's approval? The the biggest argument against the council being in charge of fire drakes is what Troller said Chime about taking over. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the proxies can rule. Or was Choler a, a rogue fire drake? Well, they called him... I'm assuming they were... Yeah, they, well, they said talking the about boss, but... Choler when they said the, oh, boss. the boss. Yeah. So, and still, that is uncertain. 
They said they didn't say killed the boss. They said what they did what to happened the boss. To the boss. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. All your Snoke theories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think the fire drinks are an arm of the council right now. That's where my lines are. I don't think so. I or think both helping hands and the fire drinks are. <laughs> and that's another idea I had. That uh, yeah. it doesn't seem to me like the council is so, backing any of the the two that we are. If you, the listener, have an Any. idea of who the fire drinks are working for, please comment on our Facebook page. <laughs> yes. So we can get an idea, too. Yeah, let us know who <laughs> yeah, totally. who you think that they are. This is a disadvantageous recording in advance. Yeah, it is. It really is. If we did Twitch, we could do a lot more with yeah. this show. But, you know, fun one shot. it would involve a lot more coordination and, yes. and installing cameras and all sorts of stuff. That's creepy. <laughs> For the council. council. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which I like that little nugget too. When uh, Chime reconnected uh, Julian's phone to listen, uh huh, uh-huh. and then just heard some clicks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I like how Chime hang up the phone and then disconnected it. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't leave it. Just disconnected yeah. it again. Like okay. We're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ex nay on Elix's phone and own fay. Why do you think he doesn't put a number on his <laughs> card? Just an address. I love him as like the Fox Mulder kind of character. He's need yeah. New, so I need a new card. He's gonna need a new card, business card. He's gonna need a new lot of things. Yeah. So in terms so. of best role playing, to cycle cycle back to that chest. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. Chime did have a lot of good moments. That's my vote. You had some good moments, too. <laughs> we'll try to make ice in the park. Yes. <laughs> Let's go steal a boat from the public park. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That wasn't even my idea. I, know, I don't I even know. know whose idea it was. It was Jordan. It was Jordan. <laughs> you can see if you can find a boat. <laughs> <laughs> what? The ice was Jordan's idea too. <laughs> and then why the world did we run with Jordan's idea? Because <laughs> he's a GM. He can make things like that work. And the whole time I'm sitting there, it's like they should just walk. <laughs> they should just walk. <laughs> just, just. Well, walk. that was what was going through my head too. I was well, like, we should just walk. Because out of game time, you guys would have just been there, and we were gonna get on with the story. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're turning, like, making an ice boat was a great idea for it, using it was, your, your Yeah, powers. it would have been a good idea for it was, it was worth the investigation. The minute's effort of rolling in-game attempt, but it wasn't... My vote for best role play is going to be Aaron for um, him steering the group to the sewers mm-hmm. to get in, and then... Then back with Katari. Yeah, yeah with Katari. That's what and I was then, thinking. Yeah. So I was going to say, Aaron, because of the way that he used Sam the way that he always does, where he's just like, I'm going to sneak in. Oh, there's something suspicious going on. I'm going to look into it myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a somebody in the closet. I'm going to shoot him <laughs> without saying a word. Just yeah, haul yeah. off and kill somebody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which is, it's... Yeah, it's very Sam. <laughs> All right, the well, way that uh, Aaron Sam well, has been point. presented had in it, the past. I would say at that point, at this point in the story, had it been Julian, Julian would have done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no questions, just bang, bang. fire. Ugh. Well, in in Sam's mind, the other side of it was uh, Katari's trust up on the bed. Dude's hiding in somebody's hiding in the closet. It's probably not a good guy. I'm pulling the trigger. Oh well, yeah. I mean, does this count well, as in the back, Atari second day? In the back of my... <laughs> <laughs> for yes. Sam, that made sense. But for, for Jer, in, in the yeah. back of my head, yeah, for, for Jer's <laughs> mindset, he would have been like, what if this is a good guy hiding from the bad guys here to save... Yeah, that would have yeah. been my fault. Oh. 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 <laughs> Sam's like, no. <laughs> Sam's just like, I know Katari, so uh, this guy's going down. <laughs> We have preferences. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. Uh, Best uh, snack. Uh, I wasn't mm. able to provide mine. Would have taken too much time. Yeah, darn time constraints. Mm. There's just going to be waffles. 
Yeah. I was going to make waffles. So we had uh, a fruit platter. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That was good. Uh-huh. That was we good. had sugar cookies with yeah. a cherry in the middle and uh, Those were chocolate good. on top. Those were good. Didn't turn out quite what I expected, but they were still good. They were, yeah, yeah, they were quite tasty. tasty. And we had a spinach and bacon quiche with a scrapple crust. Oh, scrapple so crust. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so if you're so not good. from Maryland or Pennsylvania, you probably don't know about scrapple. Scrapple is a... Unless you watch uh, Dino's Drivers and Dots. Yeah. But scrapple is a it's a local regional food that's a kind of a sausage, I guess? Well, it's, it's the it, hot dog of breakfast meats. Yes. No, it's not even that. Because what it is, it's, it's just the organ meat from pig mixed with cornmeal. Mm-hmm. Well, there's other regular. There's also regular yeah. pork mix. There, regular pork in there too, but not much. It is well, it depends so on the scrapple mix. Good. Oh, yeah. It's got it, a, it, yeah, it a very strong flavor. It. Yeah, it's, it's very good. It's very. very and so, tasty. some of them, if you get it, get them at the store, taste like just straight biscuits and gravy. I don't know what it is about the scrapple that just makes it taste like biscuits. You cannot judge it without trying it. It's yeah. true. Yeah. You cannot judge it without trying it. And I always get funny looks because when I have it at a restaurant, I put hot sauce on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people put syrup on it. Yeah, it tastes good yeah. with syrup. I like, I like putting syrup on it. I, hot see, sauce I, don't, I don't like putting yeah. syrup on my sausage or bacon either. So yeah. I like the, the contrast salty sweet going on there. Yes. So quiche, spinach bacon quiche with oh, scrapple crust. Just, yeah. It was good. Very good. So, and the cookies had either white chocolate or dark chocolate. And mm-hmm. there was one in the bite of the cookies where I got the cherry and the dark the chocolate, chocolate yeah, at the same good. in the same bite. I got that I was, bite too. I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a good bite. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. Mm-hmm. I got to try a, a nibble of the sugar cookies. Those were good. I wish I could I had the chocolate because that sounds amazing. The quiche was was an excellent breakfast. Thank you. Uh, yes. yes. And um, we started early in the morning. Yes, I could. That's why I was going to make waffles. Ah. Well, anyway, so so my vote will be for the quiche. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> Unanimous quiche. <laughs> quiche unanimous. <laughs> Scrap unanimous. Uh, I think it was the it was the scrapple that put that. It was. <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. was. At first, I thought it was like a a dark. Flaky flour crust, yeah. And I haven't had flour crust in I don't know how long because my wife is gluten free. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah. you were looking forward to that. So I was like, oh, "All right," but I mean, scrapple is great too. So it was really good. Well, now you know you can make a quiche for it. With I know. I, I don't know if my wife would eat. Well, she eats. She eats pork roll from Jersey, so she so probably she'll eat scrapple. She would probably eat scrapple. The question. question. Yes. yes. What's pork roll? Uh, it's similar to to Canadian bacon. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, I got excited there for a little bit because like, I, I kind of did too. I was like, another kind of scrapple. No, yeah, it, it's more akin to Sausage. Canadian bacon. It's good. Taylor's ham. Taylor's ham. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's really fatty. And with that, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for playing today. I know, I know that it was it was hard to get the schedule to work, and I'm really glad that we did because I've been missing this and yes. missing mm-hmm. hanging out with you all. And uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Um, so until next time. May the bones fall in your favor. Thank you for listening to Bone Thrower Theater. Our cast is Aaron, Jeff, Jeremy, Johnny, and Jordan. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0, unported license. That means that you can share the podcast, but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you would like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is at bonethrowerstheater. And also you can look us up on Facebook. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.